Dogs by Saeed Salam Narrated by Daniel Reskin Chapter 1 Seven high-tech electric bikes caused all heads to turn as they whipped through the Manhattan streets. The riders all wore colorful leather riding suits that matched their bikes and helmets. A turbine whine replaced the usually obnoxious roar of motorcycles, but still added some cool to the hot and muggy summer night. The riders scanned the lines of pretty people in front of the many nightclubs, catering to the many fetishes of the city that never slept. Slick hair and gold chains lined a mainly Italian club, while droves of multi-shaded people waited to enter a hip-hop club. Any one of them would have sufficed, but they were headed to the meat market, a semi-underground club that catered to their kind. Most people would drive or walk right past the venue without knowing it was even there. Those in the know just followed their nose to the hottest spot in the city. In any city, since they were popping up everywhere. The leader of the pack rode slightly ahead while the others rode two abreast behind him. He lifted the blacked-out visor of the helmet and inhaled all the aromas that made up New York City. Curry mixed with arroz con pollo, baklava, gunpowder, and good weed. Through it all, he smelled his favorite meal loud and clear. A glance up to the sky showed a full moon in all its glory. The lead rider pulled in front of their destination and backed his bike against the curb. He was indeed the leader, so his followers followed suit and parked. They removed their helmets, putting their rugged good looks on display. Regime stood a solid six foot one and had the build of an action figure. His complexion fell right in the middle of the race spectrum, despite his classic African features. The high cheekbones of Eastern Africa accentuated the thick lips of at least part of his ancestry. Bright, almost yellow skin gave a hint to the other part. His wavy hair had a brownish hue and flowed into a tapered beard. You smell that? His sidekick dog asked as he kicked his kickstand. He pulled off his helmet and sniffed the air. Yeah, Regime said quickly. He had actually felt it before he smelled it. The mood of the pack darkened when a Benz with darkened windows pulled to a stop across the street. No one needed X-ray vision to see, since they could smell their foes before they opened the door. Let's eat these clowns, Bean said as he unzipped his leather. He was the hothead of a pack of hotheads, but Regime showed some restraint, for once, since he was always down to ride on his enemies. Maintaining the alpha male spot took frequent acts of extreme violence. Some other time, he said and snarled at the men as they approached. Tonight was about satisfying another appetite, so it could wait. He joined his pack in glaring at their enemies. Not enough. You need more people, one of the men from the Benz bragged. Lichens could be arrogant like that, since they were slightly higher on the food chain. Some other time, Regime repeated, and turned to enter the club with his pack on his heels. The club may not have had a sign out front, but it was filled to the gills inside. The Mixed Race, Income, and Species Club catered to the discretion of different breeds. This was one of the few places on the planet where they all coexisted. The leader led the way up to the VIP section reserved for alpha males like himself. A lesser pack abandoned the table when they saw him approaching. The easy way always beats the hard way, so they took it. Drinks on me, Regime announced, and tossed a stack of hundreds in the air. It was similar to tossing breadcrumbs to the pigeons in Lincoln Park, with similar results since a small flock of birds came rushing over. Regime and his pack made a scene running through bottles of bubbly, even though alcohol didn't have any effect on them. It did have quite an effect on the women who liked that sort of thing. Money has a magnetic pull that draws women like birds to bird feed. I'm Shantae. The lead pigeon introduced herself to Regime once she ascertained he was their leader. She always got the head of whatever crew and left the leftovers for her girls. Just like the lead groupie gets the lead singer, while her friends settle for hype men, sidekicks, and security. Regime, he replied and took her hand. He offered an old school kiss on her hand, even though he was as far from a gentleman as Mecca is to Las Vegas, figuratively and literally. 
his mouth salivated from the smell and taste of a woman. Regime and Chante engaged in verbal foreplay, as he felt her up like one does a melon in the market. She was as plump and firm as any ripe fruit should be. He reached under her tight tube dress and inserted a finger into her vagina. She showed off and gave it a squeeze. Once he got his finger back, he took a sip of the juice and knew she would be some good eating. Meanwhile, his crew shared mean mugs and snarls with the lichens across the bar. Lichens were a superior being to werewolves since they were harder to kill. In even numbers, they were too much for a werewolf. They were generally stronger, smarter, and more calculating. They could easily kill werewolves with a silver stake or a sword through the heart. They evolved with the times and now carried silver bullets in the high-tech weapons they produced. Lichens could be killed as well, but it took a separation of the spines to do it. It was that advantage that made the lichens in attendance snarl arrogantly. They too were on a mission, since the meat market had the best meat in the city. I'm out, Regime announced and stood. Chante stood and wobbled from all the champagne she had consumed. The liquor served as a brine or good marinade would do. See you back at the spot, Dog said to his departing back and then turned back to their foes. The lichens had shifted their interest to a couple of big-breasted white girls. Alcohol had no effect on them either, but turned the white girls red like ripe lobsters. Fitting, since the lichens planned to eat them. Lichens were usually more reserved than the wild werewolves. They knew their survival depended on staying off the radar. As long as they didn't make a mess, they could pull it off without their leader finding out. Especially since he was all the way on another continent while they scouted the new city. Oh, I love to ride, Shante cheered when Regime escorted her to his bike. She giggled cleverly at her own double entendre and mounted the bike behind him. Is that right? he said as he passed her his helmet and helped her put it on. The electric engine whirled to life as he hit the ignition. She wrapped her arms around his torso and held on while he turned the city sights into a blur. Mm-hmm, she moaned and rocked against the vibration of the engine seeping through the seats. When they reached the Lower East Side, Regime hit a button on the bike that opened a large door of a loft building. The door opened into an elevator and rolled straight on. He hit the same button to close the door behind them. He hit the top button of an elevator panel and rode up to the top floor. The elevator door opened right into his living room. Shantae almost came instantly when she saw how he was living. Most of the industrial decor would have to be admired some other time, since he carried her straight over to the overhead loft where his bed was perched. A remote caused the blinds to roll up and flood the area with moonlight. Regime sat her down and put on a show of coming out of his leather riding suit. Under the jacket was a fitted t-shirt that displayed his well-defined body. He peeled it off and Shantae fixated her eyes on his abs. She reached out and ran her manicured nails over them like a washboard. Then came the dick. Oh, my. She marveled at the wood in front of her. So much for that myth about light-skinned dudes, huh? Regime laughed. Shantae just leaned in and gave it a kiss. She soon had a mouthful and went to work. The woman ran through a medley of her repertoire of head techniques. She had more tricks in her bag than Felix the Cat, but only made it halfway before Regime pulled out of her mouth and pulled the dress over her head. Uh, you gotta eat me first, she protested playfully. She was batting around 500 with the demand. Most men regard going down on a one-night stand like eating food off the ground. The gritty, gray, concrete sidewalks of New York ground at that. I'm gonna eat you. Afterwards, he offered in compromise. That would be a first for her, but better than nothing. She began to lay back, but Regime had other plans. He reached down and flipped her over onto her hands and knees. I love doggy style, she proclaimed and put a mean arch in her back. <laughs> More like wolfy style, Regime laughed at his own joke as he fondled her box until it soaked his fingers. The juice box was no laughing matter, so he leaned back and eased inside. 
I like Wolfie style. Shantae managed between firm thrusts that tapped on her cervix with each downstroke. Regime just nodded, since most did, even if most didn't get to tell anyone about it afterwards. The pounding that followed sounded like a round of applause as the slap of skin echoed throughout the large loft. Soon her body shivered and shook as an orgasm pulsed through her body. Lots of men change once they get the pussy, but Regime began to change while he was still in it. Shantae noticed the increase in length and girth inside of her. She felt the grip on her hips change sharply as hands changed to paws with claws. The attempt to pull away only caused the claws to sink into her skin. You're hurting me, she protested. Her pleas fell on deaf ears because Regime's ears were growing long. His beard spread until it met the hair on his head, covering his entire face with hair. The crunch of bone and tendons joined her screams and filled the air as the man transformed to beast. She soon had a full-fledged werewolf inside of her. Putting an end to her all-men-are-dogs narrative, this one was a wolf. Shantae's shouts and screams were sure to wake the neighbors, had there been any. However, Regime bought the whole building for privacy. Her wails were nothing compared to the sound of half-man, half-wolf reaching a climax of his own. He leaned back and let out a howl that could be heard for miles. Dogs cowered in doghouses or under beds when they heard it. Shantae tried to scramble away, but Regime intended to keep his word. He said he would eat her after, and eat her he did. No! The terrified woman screamed at the top of her lungs when she saw the beast behind her. An attempt to escape was thwarted by his strong grip. She wasted another prize scream when he sank his teeth into her hind quarters. Predators often start there to prevent their prey from escaping. A satisfying rush of hot blood filled his mouth and fueled his feeding frenzy. Regime literally devoured the woman right there on the spot. This wasn't the only bloodletting in the city. Across town, his pack was doing exactly what he told them not to do. Is it some other time now? Beans asked when he saw the lichens escort their own prey out of the club. He sounded like an exasperated toddler impatiently stalking a snack his mother told him to wait for. Bruh, Dog said, shaking his head. He knew there was no talking him down, so he stood and followed him as he followed them. He could be the difference that would swing the massacre one way or the other. The driver and passenger split up, getting into the front and back seats with one girl apiece. The six remaining bikes pulled out after the bends and followed from a distance. Their extraordinary sense of hearing and smell substituted the need to keep eyes on the vehicle. They followed the scent of their prey from blocks away. They all pulled in separate directions and followed their noses. The lichens possessed the same powers of sight, smell, hearing, touch, and taste, but were preoccupied with the feel of tonsils on the tips of their dicks. They guided the blonde heads up and down, ignoring the danger lagging close behind. They were there under strict orders not to prey on people without permission. The lichens usually fed on sheep and other farm animals, but nothing tastes as tasty as humans. Eating people could be messy in more ways than one. This is why their leader strictly forbids it, unless given the order. Missing persons created missing persons reports and investigations that could shed light on their existence. They were hard to kill, but not impossible. Human hunters could be dangerous if they caught wind of them. The boss wasn't here now, so they decided to break the rules. It was only dangerous if they got caught. Here, the passenger in the back seat announced when they reached the hood side of Central Park. The driver responded by pulling over and turning the car off. Wolves, the driver said and sniffed the night air as they stepped outside the vehicle. So? They don't want these problems, the passenger laughed. There was generally a precarious coexistence between lichens and werewolves. The occasional clash usually resulted in dead werewolves, since the lichens were deadlier. Sometimes it could go the other way when they were outnumbered. Sometimes, like tonight. Fuck them, 
the other decided as they headed to one of the wooded parts of the iconic park. 